market of india india's largest wholesale market in chennai so i'm at iit campus madras we have come here to meet professor suresh babu department of humanities and social sciences we are going to talk a lot of things with him especially about what will happen post lockdown for the graduates fresh graduates and the people already continuing in job let's discuss with him and get the interesting facts uh, i'm suresh babu i'm a professor at iit madras there is going to be a lot of behavioral change in both the consumers as well as the producers now after such a huge shock onto the economy there will be anxieties we don't know how the financial system is going to react to this kind of a pandemic today i have a job tomorrow i don't know what is going to happen to my job there are two kinds of hit that we are going to have one is jobs in the formal sector and second jobs in the informal economy I don't think 100% of the migrants who have gone to their villages will come back immediately. Please uh, like, share and subscribe to Avatar Live channel. My first question is uh, the scenario of great depression is it uh, new to this world or is it uh, worse than uh, Uh, earlier history is it manageable earlier thing what we had was sort of spanish flu attack which was historically a very devastating thing and that spread and that took a lot of people's life it had economic consequences also after that came the so called great economic depression late 1920s and early 30s but i use the word economic depression and that was induced by economic factors ana in the episode is different perhaps it is non economic factors that is actually causing this economic crisis so here we have a a combination of uh, non economic factors and economic factors combining to pull uh, the economy as well as the society down that is a unique thing for this episode in the uh, episode of you know pandemic come economic crisis brings about a totally different aspect from the earlier episodes the great depression time had economic consequences pandemics alone had health and other social consequences ipo we are going to have behavioral changes after this makaluda behavior and in terms of our social behavior our economic behavior ellame idu or shock vandachu and that is the difference now can we really uh adjust to this and come out of this crisis definitely we can come out because there is a lot of resilience in the economy as well as the society now i'll tell you one simple example when we uh, had the first case of corona in kerala uh, initially it was not a big kind of a problem that's what we envisaged you know one case from one student who had studied in wuhan has come back and then you know later on it started to spread once when we started to spread uh there was no way we had to really go for a lockdown and when we went to lockdown if you look at the first phase of lockdown it was full of anxieties whether we will have enough of essential goods how will we deliver these goods and then there were a lot of kind of an anxiety about how the lockdown will unravel but i think now we have we have gone to the first phase of lockdown mm. second phase of lockdown third phase of lockdown and fourth phase is coming in a different form and i think compared to a lot of countries globally india has so far did reasonably well our testing capacity has not been very high yes there is a limitation in that our uh, kind of uh, adaptation mechanisms are far better compared to a lot of other economies and societies and that will definitely bring both uh, the economy back to the rails uh, always any uh, depression or pandemic you no know, there will be new industries will evolve based on the situation and some industry will get affected yeah. in this scenario what are the sun raising industry you would say like uh, how the startup uh, entrepreneurs or the entrepreneurs should prepare for what are the exciting industries will evolve there is going to be a lot of behavioral change in both the consumers as well as the producers now yeah? because now you know social distancing as well as physical distancing all that are becoming a norm how do we really reach the end user of a product is a challenge and that is where perhaps new technologies now will be of great use 
lot of gig economy opportunities. We know there is a problem in terms of the uh, job security or whatever kind of a thing. But this crisis also throws up a lot of opportunities like that. Again, aggregators, so that's on the service economy kind of a thing, which India had already started, but now there is a huge kind of a possibility that opens up. If we really look at our strengths in terms of uh, educated workforce, drugs and pharmaceuticals, we know that India has already exported, you know, tons of paracetamol to the so-called advanced countries. Now new formulations, basic drugs, all research now really are, are the need of the hour. And that gives another set of opportunities. Third set of things, well, sanitizers, which used to be sometimes a luxury, now That's is becoming an essential commodity. Yeah. So we need to have formulations which produces them very cheaply. So uh, I would say chemicals and chemical products. Okay. What kind of chemicals? Well, chemicals, earlier our uh, chemical industry had a brand of or an image of polluting and, you know, causing a lot of environmental problems. We need to redo that. We need to have chemicals which are actually more environmental friendly as well as human friendly, third. Fourth, I think uh, a lot of designing things might now open up okay. because uh, you see this whole social distancing as well as physical distancing maintains new designs. So you have a lot of possibilities in 3D printing as well as designing that, that really comes up. And if I, if I am to list, then there are a lot of a lot of other possibilities that come other than the IT sectors kind of of a thing. Okay. As a human behavioral changes, what are the changes uh, you you envisage? Because there will be a lot of insecure feeling over the job, yeah. uh, financial insecurity, and a lot of anxiety is still there. So how we can manage that? It it will increase, or you feel that in India we can manage? After such a huge shock onto the economy, there will be anxieties. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of anxieties? Will I have a job or what will happen to my job kind of a feeling. Now, one of the important uh, issues that come there is basically uh, it is going to influence our uh, savings as well as expenditure behavior. And when I talk of expenditure behavior, uh, it's really going back to our earlier Indian kind of a thinking that we will stock something for a rainy day. Yes. We will have, you know, RC or whatever when we buy, we will keep something for a rainy day kind of thing. That might again come. In between, we had moved more to a kind of a consumption-driven kind of a thing. Again, we will go back a little in terms of more of kind of thing to precisely to tackle this whole anxiety problem. Now, the other kind of an anxiety is uh, perhaps the anxiety that is caused by the uh, financial system. We don't know how the financial system is going to react to this kind of a pandemic. In 2008, global financial crisis, it was a financial crisis and we know the origins of that financial crisis. But here, uh, financial system is going to really bear a huge kind of a burden of this adjustment. So uh, that will also induce some kind of a behavioral change. That is going to be a major kind of a factor that will influence our post pandemic thing. Now, I want to mention one thing about the degrowth. See, uh, personally, as an economist, I am not a person yeah, yeah, who, really, <laughs> oh, yeah. who really support a degrowth kind of a thing. Uh, perhaps what we should look at is a sustainable growth. Mm. See, unless and until we have growth, we cannot have distribution. Redistribution and distribution is equally important. Now, if you don't have growth, what will we distribute? We'll have to distribute the poverty to people. Yeah? So we need to have a growth which is a sustainable growth. And what do I mean by sustainable growth? Yes, environmental standards, that's a conventional notion of sustainability. Yes. Now, when we look at the post-pandemic scenario, a sustainable growth should also look at uh, decent jobs. Now the problem that we are going to have is, I use the term in my lectures also, that we are entering to, into uh, vulnerable or fragile jobs. Can you elaborate that? Yeah. Uh, vulnerable or fragile jobs means that today I have a job, tomorrow I don't know what is going to happen to my job. Okay. Now, tomorrow when I am out of my job, uh, I need to equip myself with new skills to enter into a new job. Then only the labor market will absorb me. So I'm vulnerable all the time in terms of losing my job and then uh, re-entering into the labor market. Okay. A common man question from that, uh, how this can be avoided, like how they should re or re-skill themselves? Uh, is it possible or how the government can support this kind of uh, uh, scenario? See, uh, there is a shake-up, that is definite. Already done. 
that is already done. Yet to come. Uh, it is the part one we have we have okay. seen. Part two will come post lockdown. Post lockdown. Because post lockdown life is not going to be the same as the pre lockdown. Life. So, in your perspective, how many jobs uh, India will lose? There are two kinds of hit that we are going to have. Mm. One is jobs in the formal sector, okay. and second jobs in the informal economy. Now. Formal sector jobs, well, uh, we can have some calculation as to how, how much it can be, you know, estimated and what will be the job loss yeah. that is likely to have. But informal yeah. sort, we don't have uh, any estimate. Now, roughly put, we can say that around 83 to 85 percent of Indians work in the informal economy. There will be a, a re-jig in that economy. Now, the moment I say that, I would also add that this informal economy and job market is very buoyant. Okay. For every shake-up, it will also bounce back. But when they bounce back, there is a, a, a precise problem of winners and losers. Yes. So the winners will be who will reskill themselves. Reskill themselves. Okay. Now, what kind of a reskilling? Reskill. That is a very, very uh, important aspect which we have to deal with. Why? See, we have been seeing this whole. Uh, outflow of migrants from our big cities to the villages. No? Please remember, uh, there is a general perception that migrants are uh, unskilled workers mm. and we can easily replace them with local kind of people. That's not correct 100%. They also have very specific skills. For example, in construction index industry, when you look at uh, laying of tiles, for example, no? Certain uh, sections of people from certain states in India are yeah. proficient in doing that. Now, once when they go back to their villages, they won't have jobs which are matching their skills. So, we have to really find out what their skills are and then look at that. But at the same time, all these uh, cities from where they have left, there we also have to reskill people because I don't think 100% of the migrants who have gone to their villages will come back immediately. Okay, because of the behavioral change. Because okay. of the changes that are taking place in the economy. First of all, the, the uh, industries as well as the activities will not be in a position to absorb them 100%. Okay. It will take some time for them to really come to the earlier capacity levels. So, that is one thing. Second thing, migrants also have now a kind of uh, fear of migration. Because there are no trains, yes. buses and we have seen that, you know, people have been walking and cycling to go back and things of that sort. So, that also is a kind of holding back kind of a problem. Now, given that, it opens up possibilities for the unemployed in these urban localities to really reskill them. And that is perhaps something which I have been also arguing that we have a rural employment guarantee program, yes, Mandrega. Energy. It is time that we really think of an urban employment okay. guarantee program. Now, employment guarantee, this word guarantee is a very tricky thing. Yes. Nothing can be guaranteed yeah, it now. It could be 10 days or 100 days or 1000 days. But I think it is important that we think so of that. So, that's a new thing you have spoken about, urban uh, employment scheme. Em employment yeah. scheme. And in that urban employment scheme, we should first of all identify the skill gaps in the urban thing. Yeah. And then we need to skill this urban youth. For, for example, if you take Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu has the highest rate of urbanization in the country. There is a lot of migration from uh, third tier to the second tier cities and from second tier to Tyrone. the cities like Chennai and other places. Now, once when we have this continuous stream of migration, we know that the demand in the labor market is for very specific jobs. For example, you know, AC mechanics or, you know, for electrician or whatever it is. We can actually, you know, upskill those people who are migrating by giving what we call as a bridge course or whatever kind of thing. Because we already have a large pool of, you know, uh, polytechnic diploma holders, ITI people and of course engineering graduates. That's who are what not. my question is next, that engineers will be able to adapt to that. Will their mindset will allow them to go for a, this kind of semi-graduate job? No, I think we need to have a mindset change there. Okay, so that's very important. See, that's very important because, see, there is a, a social aspiration that is taking mm. place. Uh, when we were students, we thought that, you know, graduation is, is a very high degree. But then came this whole professional degrees kind of a thing. Now, uh, this professional degree people have to be really professionals when they are really, you know, accomplishing a task. And that mindset in terms of, you know, converting oneself to a professional, okay. that is not 100% done. So, they have to unlearn 
and relearn. Uh, relearning is very difficult, very, very difficult, yes. But unlearning is even more difficult more because difficult, yeah. they have been in one kind of a trajectory yes. of learning. You see, the demand in the labor market will be those kind of jobs. I'll tell you one example of that. There is an aggregator who actually uh, provides skilled uh, uh, labor for jobs in terms of uh, plumbing or in terms of or repairing and, and things of that sort. And okay. the skills that are required for that is something which is a polytechnic diploma person. Now they then test those skills, do whatever bridging that is required, then attach you to another kind of a person who is more proficient in that. Then they will slowly leave you to address this whole, you know, calls from the customers. And that's fairly a handsome kind of a, of a job that really comes, no? Okay. What will happen to this uh, fresh graduates? and the people who have aspiration to do go for IA studies in not only in India, even abroad, whether they should continue their IA studies or they have to stop and especially fresh graduates, what they have to do? They have to wait for the job. Some people would have received the offer letter. What is the scenario of them? Immediately, I don't see any panic in terms of, you know, the labor market recalling all these offer letters and things of that sort. That will take some time because, you know, the post-lockdown planning and production of firms will slowly start gaining momentum after the lockdown gets over. Uh, what will happen is in the uh, quarter three, quarter four of this financial year, and there we will see employment uh, issues slowly surfacing. But uh, having said that, I think uh, fresh graduates will have a lot of chance. Okay, what because they have to do? They have to really uh, keep their eyes open in terms of what is going to be the new skill that is being demanded in the labor market. For example, if there is a huge demand for, you know, uh, accountants, you have to really, uh, you know, be an accomplished uh, tally accountant or whatever so it is. You have, to, you have to do that. Labor market now demands that. Okay. So what we need is a very uh, important concept of labor market, which has been argued in a in lot of uh, discussions earlier also. We need to have a kind of a flexible specialization. That is, uh, in my generation, I am a professor and I can be a professor lifelong. Lifelong. That's yeah. it. I will retire as a professor yes. kind of thing. But in this youngster's generation, for five years they might be a, a, an accountant. For the next three years they might be a, 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 a very okay. good designer or a journalist. So, you need to constantly upskill yourself. Okay. And I would say that th there is a lot of possibilities for that. Okay. For a very simple reason that. Now, there are a lot of online learning that is possible, which was not there in the earlier situation. For example, even this, uh, uh, we have our own IITs, NPTEL courses, which, which anybody can take on, on a lot of things. And we can skill ourselves having the certification from, you know, various agencies, including IIT for NPTEL kind of a thing. You can choose your course and you can keep skilling in that. And labor market will open up, that time you have to enter. Now, regarding this, you know, uh, higher studies thing, I think higher studies, we can postpone a little, but we should not leave it. And a lot of universities outside have already agreed to defer admissions by one year. Because you cannot travel now, you can travel at a later stage. Uh, this whole thing about air travel, resuming and things of that sort, that will settle after a, after a while. And still, there is a possibility of going out and then continuing that studies. So I think the youngsters should not get dispirited because, you know, there is a post-pandemic world and this post-pandemic <laughs> world also have its own challenges, challenges but it also presents every challenge is an opportunity in a way so the youngsters should keep upskilling themselves look at the labor market what are the skills that are required in the labor market train themselves according to that and then there will always be an opening in the labor market to which they will have to enter so i think it's a very it's a very challenging thing for them but i I also think that at that age, when they are, you know, graduating, they can easily adapt to, to new skills. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. It was a great pleasure meeting you. You have spoken about how people should uh, learn, relearn, unlearn, whatever, and also adapt to the situation, which is very important, and reskilling uh, with whatever the knowledge they have, and uh, connect to the labor market, which is the new market. Uh, and, and you also spoke about a lot of opportunities during this challenging time. So thank you very much uh, for this insights and time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.